APTN's Edmonton-based reporter Danielle Parody has been working on a number of interesting stories, including the Chasing Horse case. She joins me now for an update on those stories. Hi, Danielle. It's great to see you on our show. Why don't we start with Nathan Chasing Horse. Uh, what details did you find out from the arrest paperwork? Yeah, the, um, the arrest warrant from Las Vegas gave us a little bit of insight into what the charges were um, in that jurisdiction. So Chasing Horse is looking at facing eight uh, felonies. Um, the majority of them are sexual assault or um, uh, pornography of a minor under 16. And then there's also um, tra sex trafficking of an adult. So we're still waiting on some details, but um, my understanding is that that may be the connection. Um, one of those charges is the connection between Satina Nation um, just outside of Calgary and, and Nevada and, and why the police have been working so closely together. Uh, I haven't heard anything as it relates to the charges in BC, but I think we'll have some more information out about that soon. And Danielle, what do we know about the alleged victims in this case as well? The victims, uh, so far as I'm aware, have all been Indigenous women, often uh, vulnerable women. If you look at the warrant, it's very heartbreaking. Um, it, it seems that there is this um, this a pattern of behavior that looks at uh, predatory behavior. So taking advantage of people that are vulnerable, people who feel that they don't quite fit into the community in some way. Um, and then also uh, we're seeing multiple, what I want to say, so-called wives, because some of these, uh, some of these people were girls when they were um, allegedly uh, either trafficked or, or given even as a gift uh, is in the warrant to Chasing Horse. So, uh, and, and not necessarily any evidence of paperwork or a formal marriage, but, but something that the, uh, that the women in this case were led to believe that they were married. And what message have police been sending out to the communities? Yeah, in, in every situation and jurisdiction that I'm aware of, police have indicated that there could be more victims. So we often see this when there are cases of um, of sexual assault or sexual violence, that there are more victims and, and people are afraid to step forward. Really heartbreakingly, um, Sergeant Farmer from Sutina had talked about how it was challenging for the people involved to take that first step and that they are, um, you know, they're often women who were abused under the context of ceremony. They were told that this was tradition and, and they're still struggling with that. So police are saying they're anticipating more victims and to please come forward if you if you do believe that you are a victim. Well, we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that one. And let's turn now uh, to the Cindy Dixon case out of the Supreme Court of Canada. The Vonta Gwich'in woman's appeal started this week, right? So how did it get to the Supreme Court? Yeah, so this is a this is a result of a long legal battle. Um, in 2019, Cindy Dixon and uh, uh, had uh, tried to run for uh, the for the council for um, going to Gwantuk and uh, she she lives in Whitehorse um, because Old Crow is a fly-in community and um, and she has a son who has some medical needs and needs to be near a hospital. Uh, she was denied because there was a requirement to live on reserve, and that's what started this whole appeal process moving. So ultimately, what is at stake here, Danielle? Mm -hmm. So there's two very different arguments um, from one from Ms. Dixon and one from Von Punk Uh Ms. Dixon is saying that if, um, and this is under Section 25 of the Charter, that which is traditionally a right or is, is a um, is a charter right that's supposed to help protect First Nations when it comes to self-government. Um, but Ms. Dixon is arguing that if Section 25 is used in this way, that it acts as immunity or a shield from charter rights, and that that put that violates Von Tuckwitchin First Nation citizens' rights. Uh, the nation, on the other hand, argues that it has a very robust set of human rights. Um, regulations themselves and that they never consented to the charter when they entered into their self-government agreement. So you have uh, two different perspectives on this and then we'll see where it lands. Well, a couple different stories there, Danielle. We'll certainly be keeping, in, keeping an eye out. Thanks so much for this. Thank you, Daryl.